Game of Thrones sort of captures the zeitgeist more than anything else I've seen. It's the perfect metaphor for where we stand as a society. It is confusing. It's epic. It's uh, about good and bad, but it's not black and white. It's about um, challenges. It's about good guys doing things that you wouldn't expect of them. It's about bad guys turning out to be good guys. Sort of like society in general today. Winter is coming in the series means a lot of different things to different people. Winter is coming to some means, you know, hide, because hard times are coming, and we can't do anything about it, and the only thing we can do is hide away. For others, it means winter is coming. That's an opportunity to show how strong we are, um, because we, in this case, the Starks in the series, we are wolves, and wolves are best uh, when they are challenged, and winter is a challenging time, and will give us an opportunity to be better. Whatever the response is to the phrase, winter is coming, winter is coming is very much part of European society today. Because I do believe that the social contract underlying European society since the end of the Second World War has run its course and needs fundamental renewal. Um, for the first time in two or three generations, parents sense that their children will be worse off than they themselves. And um, whether we are going to be successful as a society depends on our response to that fact. Now, we tend very often to simply deny the fact and simply say, no, it isn't true. People are wrong. People are misguided. But I think honesty dictates that we should say that, yes, indeed, um, this society has reached such high levels that you need to consider the possibility of lower levels in the future. And the response to that uh, will determine whether we can maintain the social structure we believe in, whether we can maintain the values we believe in, or whether we will uh, manage decline rather than shape the future. Fear cuts deeper than swords. Now, this is something I see in my society, and I'm sure you will see in many uh, European societies, but perhaps also in uh, the United States, that it is not the actual fact of things going wrong, but the fear that things might go wrong that paralyzes political action in society. Because in the Netherlands, we, have, we are the second uh, wealthiest country in the EU, just um, right behind Luxembourg. Um, we have strong social fabrics, we have strong social systems, but the fear that this might become unhinged um, dictates political, the political environment and dictates attitudes of uh, uh, politicians. When the snows fall and the white winds blow, the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. Here again, Europe is struggling with this tension between individualism and community. Now, today, because of our individualism, we tend to highlight the importance and the beauty of community. But I am a son of parents who, because of community, were stuck in a place and were not allowed to go to university because they were coal miners. You didn't do that as coal miners. The pit, that was your future. And if you were very brilliant, we're Roman Catholics, if you were very brilliant, you might become priest but nothing else. That was also community. Community could be also stifling. Um, and we've fought a long way to get in a place where we are individuals, and we are recognized as individuals, but we need to redefine what community is in relationship to um, retaining our individual uh, uh, rights. And Europe is really struggling with that. Most men would rather deny a hard truth than face it. Now here, we're at the core of the problem in the EU today. There is something in European nature, or perhaps in human nature, that whenever there's a problem, we can get rid of it by blaming somebody else. Traditionally, in Europe, we would blame the Jews, or we would blame the gypsies, or we would blame some other minority group, or foreigners, or whatever. Now, this is not always as fashionable as it used to be. Um, some parties still do that, but others have found other people to blame, the EU for instance. Blame the EU for everything, and all our problems will be solved. I use Facebook a lot um, to just get a flavor of what people are thinking about subjects. And 
somehow, very often, when something happens, a tragedy happens, a human tragedy, whatever, the immediate response is to try and find someone to blame. And the EU is always one of the targets for blame. And um, I think that is silly. Um, you don't blame the UK as uh, a country for something going wrong. You don't say that if uh, things are looking down in the economy, why don't we leave the UK? Well, some people in Scotland say that. Why don't we leave the UK and all our problems will be solved? But here you say, why don't we leave the EU and all our problems will be solved? A man who won't listen can't hear. Now, this brings me to the point of how we communicate in this day and age. If I look at my kids um, and the students I had when I was a professor at university in Utrecht, people have, what we did when we were young, we were taught to find things. Finding things, the process of finding things when you were studying was actually part of your education. When looking for things, you found the context and you zoomed in on what you needed to find. And this process was part of your education. Now, thanks to Google, um, finding things is no longer the problem. Um, you can find things within a, a few seconds just going to Google. Um, but then contextualizing what you have found has become more difficult. You know, the, the, the uh, difference in the way my kids and my students operate with this, and we did, is fundamental in the way society is going to operate in the future. So I think their capacity to sort of skid over reality uh, at incredible speed, combined with our learned, uh, acquired capacity to contextualize, should be part of the solution of today's problem. Europe should be honest about the fact that we can't solve all the problems, and should be honest about the fact that we can solve the problems that will create a better and stronger society in uh, the future. Let me end with one of the nicest quotes in the series, because I think it sums up everything we need to think about today and tomorrow and everything we need to discuss. Very profound. If we die, we die. <laughs> but first, we live. Thank you very much.